Just see behind me here, this is one of the first outlier stones uh, near the Cauldron Barrow site here around Medway in Kent. Uh, we're just heading down this path here and we're going to sort of uh, see a few other stones hopefully as we get towards Cauldron. Uh, just here with the lay hunters here in this sort of April morning. Um, and let's see what else we can find along this path. I mean, it's fascinating that there's a big sarsen stone here almost pointing the way to where we're going, the main sort of temple site here, the Cauldron Barrow. So it's almost like a sort of very spaced out avenue. Yes. Very spaced out. Yeah. Yeah. So about half a mile. Yeah. Sort of marking sort of along the route to Cauldron. Yeah. It's more of a convenient stone just to remind you that you're going in the right direction, I would suggest. There's a classic kind of mark stone for yeah. of the yeah. lay hunter style. Yeah. Alfred Watkins. Yeah. Interesting. Just yeah. with me, up there in this long barrow, I suspect we get this. That's a piece yeah. of limestone. Yeah. 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 Okay, what we've got is we've got this this path which is basically going to take us to Cauldron Barrow. Um, we will, at the end of the day, end up going over towards Trosley Church which is in direct line over there. It will become clear. It looks a bit like a, a building from Tuscany, a Roman building if you like, from the style of the town. That where it slopes down is the end point of Rutham Hill. And that's where St George's Church is, just over there. Um, and as we're looking at, you've, you've basically you've got the top ridge of the, the North Downs there. And Doe Church is about in direct line to this path. Almost in direct line, if you went across, it's up there. going through the woods so I'm going to follow the lay hunters through the woods but not following a ley line I'm going well of course so this should be kind of interesting a bit more adventurous so let's just uh, make our way through here stone which is which is sizable yes. and again a point yeah. For a direction marker, way marker. Yeah. Uh, it's got a bit of a um, <coughs> little basin there. If it was flat rather than standing up. I, I, I'd say it was it's uh, fallen, it was a wreck and it was and a cauldron, you, there is oh. one with well you can almost have a bath in it. Did you get these same shapes on um that had locks of drome alignment in East Anglia? Yeah. You get sarsen sort of erratics and they're all kind of triangular like this four, five, six, and there is one underneath that tree, sorry Chantel, under that tree where it's fallen down, which is a very large one, similar to the size of that big one leaning up against that tree. So what have so we got to see here, the seven in total here? Yeah, yeah, you may, you may find eight, but uh, it was conveniently used as a place to dump horse manure up until a few years ago. Do you think these were moved from the fields or this was original no. placement? No, I think this is an original placement. You know, it's been dispersed. It may have been a place prior to actually making use of cauldron. So this could have been a small stone circle even? That I'm not sure of. Yeah, none of these stones are marked on the map of course. <laughs> none of them. No, no. Some maps. No, not marked on the OS Explorer map. Yeah, but can you get okay. So There's you won't know about these unless you have intimate local knowledge such as on there. Yeah. So we just made it a bit further down the um, track towards Cauldron. We've seen two outliers already. Behind me is just one of seven or eight very large sarsen stones that are obviously part of the whole kind of complex here. 
and I really suggest that these seven or eight here would have formed a stone circle even because why would there be that many in one very small space? Unfortunately, they're not marked on any OS maps. I think some of the older maps, one or two of them might be on there. But generally speaking, no, they're not. This is a general thing we find in England and in other countries where these sites will just get kind of run over. If enough trucks and sort of big rigs go by here, it will just bury them. Um, and so unfortunately we lose things just through ignorance really, just through like modern modern technology and development. So it's really good to be, uh, know the local knowledge here. People like John Lord, Lawrence Main actually walk the land. And these lay hunters who kind of actually, you know, are keeping this tradition alive of walking the land finding where these lost sites are and, uh, and even mapping and marking them. Very important job. You have two of these. Um, Neil Oliver has recently been doing a program on ancient Britain and he was carefully shown uh, scrambling up the north side of the bank so that it didn't show all this paraphernalia, as it were. And I can understand that. But he was saying that this barrow is the oldest barrow in Britain. Um, and even, I mean, for those who know Wayland Smithy, West Kennet, mm. for example, and the others like East Kennet and so on, but those are the two easiest ones that I can quote, which have chambers, this doesn't. This has layers. The two standing big entrance stones, they <coughs> buried the remains of ancestors in layers. And they were down up to six feet down from that top. The reason that it's now laying back as it were, and the stones, as you will see in a while, have fallen down at the front, was that religious zealots actually excavated and took away this front to get it to collapse and um, really for many hundreds of years I think it was almost just an overgrown jumble of brambles and so on. Um, Stukeley um, never came here which is rather strange because he went to Kitscote and like most of the places he went to he'd, he'd draw including himself in it but he never came here and it's possible that um, he hadn't been made aware of this and it was only in the 19th century that they started to excavate and clear the brambles at the back and started to uncover the stones and when they first started doing that rather incorrectly uh, they considered it to be a circle and they became quite excited because circles in Kent are few and very far between so it became known as that sign will say at the back uh, cauldron stone circle and it was dedicated to Benjamin Harrison and um, for all the work that he had done in the 19th century um, regarding paleolithic tools and so on and they've, they've had the sign there since that time and I'm amazed that they haven't taken it down because it isn't a stone circle but it is a long barrow and it is reputedly the oldest in Britain um, now to our left we have what are referred to as lynchets. And lynchets are, we have lower lynchets and higher lynchets. And these relate to agriculture. And the fact is that Coldrum is sitting on lynchets. And lynchets is, is an area where previous agriculture has taken place. So suddenly we've got a barrow, which is, in modern terms, 6,000 years old. And that's already sitting on a site which has had agriculture taking place Prior. Prior to it, yeah. So, rewrite the history books, really, because that's what it's about. You know? I find that bit really quite amazing. Over, I mean, two weeks ago we could see it, but the rape has, has come out in its own glory. But on that ridge, just over there, is a bear site, usually, which was what is believed to be um, the sister to Kit's Cote in terms of a long barrow. There are, there may be stones under the ground, but there is nothing to see as per Kitscote. And that would have been possibly earlier than this. But I don't, I, that's, that's me puzzle. Because Kitscote is an entirely different style to 
It's a cauldron. Is it natural? Yes, yes, yes it, it is. is. Yeah, absolutely natural. Over in that... See the hedge of them? One of your At that point into the wood, you have a vast amount, a vast, large, vast of stuff. And these, so there was an avenue running from here through to the river towards Kitscoty and it may have been an avenue uh, like a sacred avenue the Via Sacra and the river was the Medway yes it is the only river the River Medway <coughs> which is you can see the the hills in front of you well that is the western side of, of the valley if you like the hills of the valley of the Medway which dropped down and from Burling Church which when we stand up there we will be able to see, the lights are not very good, is less than a mile to the west of Burling Church and west of that uh, crown ridge of ground. So, and they're all in line. Um, Paul Devere and Jan Devere, they, they did an alignment through from Trosley Church through Cauldron um, to, to Snodland Church the old one by the river and across and uh, that may have well have been one of the routes we're gonna to have to move in just behind me here is Coldrum Long Barrow um, this is a very unusual site it's kind of built upon a mound and then they have these sarsens uh, and also they have kind of like a very kind of unusual chamber which is extremely high up uh, and you can kind of see that behind me here uh, it goes back about 6,000 years, which is pretty ancient, although originally, even, you know, the maps were made of it back in the 1800s by Flinders Petrie, of all people, and others. They thought it was a stone circle before they realised it was actually a long barrow and part of the, the greater complex here around the Medway megaliths. But it's very unusual. Um, as you can see here, there's a lot of stones here. It's been kind of partly destroyed by Christian zealots who didn't want any kind of pagan activity here. Um, but let's go and take a closer look, see what we can find. Uh, they're showing on the, on the, on the, on the sky. Yeah. It looks like English looking from here. It could be the United States. It's almost like what you get in new grains, isn't it? And now. Is it for attracting blood, for the slaughter, or for ritual? Birthing, birthing, baptism pool, the basement font. Birthing spot. It's yeah. all in line with the rest of them, though. Yeah. What's the case? So it, it, you know, basically it's a con, it's a constructional element. Yeah. It will be. It puts the whole thing together. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, a very big, it's, a very big it's just there. this, it's just these, one, two, three, four, and a star shape, oh. but anyway, that's... Okay, what about this huge hole in this one here? Yeah. It almost looks like a mortise and tenon, doesn't it? That's an interesting little uh, recess there as well. Oh. But, uh, and it was, as I say, on different levels, um, which is completely against what you would find at Wayland Smithy or West Kennet, yeah. which had the chambers. Yeah. I mean, these you can easily see why they thought this was a stone circle. I mean, it's very easy to misunderstand that. No, but it isn't. No. Mm. Is this roughly how they found it? No. No, it was completely overgrown. Um, you could see a little bit of this, but it, it was a mass of brambles. What, what about the stones? Were they... They were covered up. Mm. Yeah, but they haven't been moved. No. So they were in this circle. No, those... In this circular shape. Yeah, there like is a... Like a a there curve, is a drawing, uh, an illustration down at the bottom, which demonstrates uh, how it is believed it was constructed, uh, which we will look at at the it's end. A bit this, as I say, is in a direct line. Everything is in a direct line if it's the next thing on uh, to Trosley Church, which is straight through the back there. But as I, say, I maintain, there was 
that one just over there which is you can see it when the rape isn't there it's grubbed out sight as I say there is a mass absolute mass following that hedge line down to that point of sarsen stones in that wood area an absolute mass of them unfortunately um, they're breeding pheasants in there so you can't access that point but you can go past from the other point but it would be the place for a stone circle you'd think down there and I don't believe that these trees were here no. at that sort of time I believe that the place was was as clear as clear could be and the trees were to the north yeah. and the trees to the south yeah. and that's where they that's where they got their material from yeah. uh, rose rose wood in uh, item which is south of item main village near to uh, ivy hatch yeah. um, which is a hamlet of item is an area where there were many um, uh, houses yeah. which as I say, with a beehive type, which were in the ground, like my, you know, sort of we yeah. like the ones that we saw yeah, up in uh, the Outer Hebrides. Oh yes, uh, yeah? uh, on the Lewis, the yeah, uh, yeah. high pitched roof. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Once we walked down. Yes. Uh, so yeah. how would they have moved these stones? Little finger, magic. <laughs> Always like to throw that one in there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. What is it? Juicing? I don't know. <laughs> Any idea where they, these come from, these sarsen? Well, typically, um, we have these erratics, call them what you like, um, in, in the natural chalk, an area. You have them lying around, and people dutifully would ignore the ones that we've just gone past and say oh, they've been lying there since the year dot. You know, they just happen to be there. I think we perhaps understand slightly differently and think otherwise. Um, they have been moved here collectively in the same way that the ones at uh, Avebury were moved. They weren't just lying there, they were, they were collected and moved along. Um, same as Stonehenge, but these have less work on them. Is there any like legends of how they were moved, any giant legends or anything like that? No. Not that I've been made aware of, let's put it that way. and. Uh, I've never seen any reference to giants moving these stones. There's none of that. What about horses? Are they used in numbers for pulling and stuff when, when the horses? You didn't are... have heavy horses. No. You no. had the you had the small, almost like the Shetland pony type yeah, thing. Not too small. Yeah. Unless you have a hundred of them. You know, you go up hill, you have to lift the horse the heavy transport, when, when they could actually get to it with wheeled transport, was done with oxen anyway. Yeah, oxen, yeah, powerful, yeah. I mean, the dimensions of these two stones absolutely vast. Obviously, they're not just sitting on there. You go down inside, inside this chamber, and you can actually see, I mean, these go right the way up. These are huge, aren't they? They are vast. And that's it, you've asked. Are there any carvings on these stones? Not that I've noticed. Not that I've noticed. Spirals of no. no. um, With all sarsen, you tend to get um, a number of holes. Are these yeah. are these natural, or are they in fact um, yeah. pect holes? You know, yeah. they could be. It could be either. But yeah. um, I've hmm. not seen or heard anything to the contrary to say that they are um, and no other than natural. No, no notches. No. The, the burials were placed in layers and uh, this was all excavated by, um, I believe one of them was uh, Presswich. Is his name Presswich? Something like that. Was, well, I know Petrie, Flinders Petrie was there. Flinders one. Petrie was here, he also did it. He was working in conjunction with Benjamin Harrison. And they they were both involved in the excavation in here. And um, when things were put back, they also included concrete um, to ensure that things were stable, so that these weren't going to collapse inwardly. As of course, what happened um, to the Long Barrow at Addington, 
when the Reverend Jenkins decided to have a oh, right. little, nosy around. Little, nosy around, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, I have specific reference from the Kent Archaeological Society um, who've carried out in depth examinations of this site. What about the holes in the, some of the stones? Is that a, an ancient thing or is that something that's been done over the years? Because it would be difficult to do it with a tool unless you a modern, you know. No, it's not difficult. Um, to work in sarsen stone, which is silicate of sandstone, yeah. it is extremely hard. It's hard yeah. They say it's yeah. harder than granite. Yeah. But like all these things, with time, and time yeah. is something yeah. that you can have, yeah. um, you can achieve an awful lot yeah. of things. So this is so, so this is facing east, is it? Yes. So that would so potentially it could be an equinox align, uh, sunrise alignment, potentially. Yes. Yes. Um, the other thing, of course, is that Burling Church is not aligned east-west. It is its alignment is nearer to northeast, and I found that out to my cost, probably 15 years ago when I went there to watch the spring equinox. And I was standing there and I was waiting and I got my camera just like you and I was out there waiting for the sun to come up and lo and behold it didn't come up where it was supposed to. <laughs> and I went whoops so I had to change the camera around and I suddenly realised wrong John the, the church is not aligned east west. I mean because over on the hills you can kind of see potential notches in those hills. Hmm. I just wonder if they were, if there's anything, any sort of earthwork, markers, cuts. That you, you... Can you see that little, that little, little V and there is like a pylon coming out of it. Mm. Can you see that? Mm. Right, directly up there. Well that is, as near as damn it, can you see that? Mm. That is, is due east. Mm. But that... I, I can't make that out as to that looks modern to me and just below that you have Kitscoty. Oh, so Kitscoty is east from here. Mm. Interesting. Mm. There you have it on the map. Where are we looking here? We're having um, Coldham Long Barrow is where, where we're standing is, is over here. Station, you? you see there the purple over there. Oh, first time. East, you have Burning Church in this mound. This this field, this more powerful field, opposite the All Saints yes, Church yes. Burning. And then this is not quite exactly due east. It's just if you nice. put that there, just 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 a bit south yeah, of. Well, that could depend on. And that. then if you carry on over here, you come to Kitscoty Burial Chamber. See that blue grid line, 61, just above Kitscoty. It's just above. The long barrack cauldron, you see. So well, that's they are, they are, virtually, they are due east west. But with this is my second most favourite church in the So we're at the church of St Peter and St Paul, and Lawrence just pointed out to me that actually. St Peter in French is Pierre which actually could mean standing stone and actually any St Peter dedicated churches may have been chosen because they were built on ancient megalithic sites. The best thing is to see inside as well it's got some rare elements within the church but uh, the yew tree which we will see when we go in is on the line of Imolk um, if you happen to come here around about the 3rd of February, whilst the rest of the sun has come up in certain areas, it comes around the side of the hill, comes straight the way through the U, runs down the eastern end of the church and disappears over there. Normally he's chasing the moon. Bit of a love relationship there. Part of my stronger belief that this was, well certainly this location is why the church was placed here because this was a a site of veneration prior to uh, early Christians coming along and adopting a site. Genuinely feel that. It's already in this church, which is um, not too far from Coldrum. Actually, found a megalith, a sarsen, in the but in the foundations. So it does suggest that this church was built on the foundations of an ancient site. Um, obviously, there's not much left of it. 
But it's interesting that you can still see the stone now. Which is why I think that this was a really venerated site beforehand. And it's, it's linked with Cauldron Barrow. And it, they've, well, they don't seem to link the two as such. Um, Paul Devereux suggested in the Lay Hunter, I think, issue number 88, that there was a lay between this church, Coldrum, Snodland Church, and going out towards Burham Court across the Medway. Isn't there legends of tunnels around here? Yeah, there is a legend of a tunnel between here and Coldrum Barrow, but tunnels can also be taken as the, the legend of uh, energy links and other such things as we know. I've been, I've been doing this, or <laughs> travelling this, for 40 years. And you know the adage, uh, going A to B as quickly as you can? Well, B being Tosley Church and so on, I, I have ignored these until last August. And suddenly they were there and I could have kicked myself. And um, they're beauties. Do you think these are, these are cut marks or is this natural? I am, there is an awful lot there for that to be natural, yeah. strangely enough. And it is slap bang on the summer solstice sunrise day, which we've just walked, that came down the brow of the hill to the side of Stodsley Church. And if you extend it, it comes precisely to this uh, spot on the map. And uh, see that's the path for summer solstice sunrise day. It reaches the road just at this spot where you've got that lane, that access drive from that house reaching the yellow, yellow road. And that's where we're standing now. And it's on the summer solstice sunrise lay that we've just walked. Cool. So look at this. Look at these. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think there's a bit more than just natural in that, don't you? Well, I mean, that's what I feel about that one.